Thank you for joining me today. My name is Dr. Tom LeHue. We're going to be looking at type six today and we're going to talk about sixes need to test people. And uh, this is coming from Beatrice Chestnut's book, uh, The Enneagram Guide to Waking Up. She talks about key patterns in each of the types. Before we get started, I just want to remind you that the, in the description below is a link to my website, tomlehue.com. I am available for Enneagram coaching appointments, also relationship uh, coaching. And I have several different certificate programs and classes that I offer that are all information is about them on my website. And uh, you can invite me now to come and speak to your team. If you want me to come uh, live or whether you want me to speak uh, via Zoom or some other platform, I would love to talk to your, your leadership team, your staff, uh, marriage retreats, whatever I can do to help you and your team um, have more compassion for each other, understand each other better, and be able to work together. I think the Enneagram is great. I think it's very helpful for companies and teams, churches, the staffs, to uh, understand more about themselves and how to work to be more effective in, in our, uh, our taking care of one another. All right, so let's talk about type sixes, and we're gonna talk about this need to test people. Let's see what she says in her book, and uh, we'll interact with it. Okay, she says, you likely seek to build relationships with people you can trust, but trust can be difficult. Um, getting to that point in the relationship where you feel 100% I know this person's for me, I'm 100% for them, and I don't have anything to worry about. I know that they've got my back, and I know I've got their back, and nothing could go wrong with this. It might be very difficult for you to arrive at that 100%. Uh, she says, notice if you do a lot of testing uh, of people to, in order to feel safe. Um, yeah, I was thinking about a dentist one time that was talking to one of my daughters when she was little and she was restless. She was nervous, of course, being at the dentist. The Novocaine wasn't working as well as it should. And she got a little bit anxious, worried, and she started to like sit up. And the dentist pushed her back down in the chair and he looked her in the eyes and he said, do you trust me? To me, that's just creepy. Because I would naturally as a seven trust somebody until they said that to me. As soon as you ask me if I trust you, then now, no, I don't. I did until you asked me if I trust. That's the kind of the thing you would hear before they tie you up and throw you in a van. Do you trust me? Sure, yeah, I trust you. And then you get duct taped and off you go, right? And so this need or this need to test people to are these people really worthy of my trust will they really be there are they there to support me remember the fear of a six i would say one of the fears of a type six is to be without support to be without assurance to be without a team of people that you can trust that's a terrifying thing to feel like you're all alone out there by yourself, isolated. Why, that would be, you know, probably the person that would get picked off. The one that isolates away from the crowd. And you think about the animals out in the uh, Sahara, Sahara, Savannah, out in the Savannah, you know, when those deer or those gazelle or those wildebeest wander from the safety of the group. What happens to them? They're the targets. They're the ones that get picked off. And so if you're a six, you're probably aware of this desire to stay close to the center of the herd, to have know that you have this support of a team around you to protect you. I remember I was in a coaching appointment once with a professional football player and he was a six. And he was talking about how frustrated he was that uh, all of his life he's worked to be a part of a professional football team all through high school football and college football and now here he was finally you know a key part of a football team a professional football team one of the starting players and he was so disheartened and discouraged because what he came to realize is it's the very people on your team that you can't trust the most you know, you would think if you're a part of a pro team that it's the other team that you got to watch out for, you know, or it's the managers or the producers of all of this that you need to be careful with. But what he found was 
behind him were three other players that were counting on him getting hurt, him getting injured, or him failing in some way so that they could take his place and that they could be the starter then. And he was just very disheartened that all of his life he's looked forward to being a part of the safety, the security um, of being on a professional team and only to be disheartened by realizing these people aren't for me. These people are against me. They're hoping I'll fail. They'll, they're hoping that I get injured in a practice so that they can then, you know, overcome and take my position. And you can see that line between six and three, you know, that line of when sixes are under stress, when things aren't going well, they look a little bit like a three, meaning they start to overperform. They try to get ahead of whatever is after them. They try to prove that you don't want to mess with me. You don't want to, you don't want to come at me. I'm going to overcome these obstacles. I'm going to be the most prepared. I'm going to stay vigilant and I'm going to overcome all of these threats and all of these dangers that might try to overtake me. Okay, so testing people. What does that look like? Well, I've got a sister-in-law that's a six and when she worked at a bank, you know, she talked about one time um, she knew the answer to a question before she even asked it. But she had a customer come in uh, that she didn't feel like was being direct or honest with her. And so she went down a series of questions that she knew the answers to, to in order to position this person up against a wall, so to speak, um, to see, is this person going to be honest with me? When, when I know the answer to this question, I'm going to ask questions to sort of pin them down. And you may find as a six, there's nothing you love more than catching someone in a lie. Now, what is the never ever behavior for a six? Never lie to a six. Um, but notice if there's something within you that kind of gets excited, something in you that kind of intensifies, some kind of emotional response. If you think you've caught somebody in a lie, if you think you, you're you know, like a dog uh, on the scent, you're, you're prowling after somebody and you, they've left a trail of inconsistencies in their stories and you know, you know that they're not being honest. You know that they're not being a truthful or 100% accurate in the way they're telling their story. And notice if there's something in you that gets excited about that. Uh, maybe you get really hurt also if it's somebody that you care about or if it's somebody that you expected more of. But just notice if there's within you this like excitement or this, you know, um, heightened awareness as you begin to realize that somebody is not being straightforward and direct or 100% truthful with you. Also notice if there is within you this uh, love or let's say not love, but tendency to want to tattletale on people. Were you like that as a kid? Did you, nothing, you know, made you happier than catching your little brother or catching your younger sister doing something that they weren't allowed to do? And then you could, you know, uh, be the security guard that observes and reports. Nothing you love more than going and tattling on someone, going to the authority figure in the house and revealing this information that they weren't aware of and being the one that is credited with saving the day, swooping in and catching them in their act, catching them in the deceit, catching them in their uh, shenanigans, and being the one to, to report back uh, to the authority figures the, the wrongdoings of someone else, the little security guard. Now realize, these can be great characteristics in your adult life. This is what maybe makes you a Marine or makes you a police officer or makes you an EMT or makes you a 911 operator or makes you a risk management uh, analyst, whatever that is, I don't really know. But whether this makes you, you know, an insurance executive, these kinds of skills or impulses or compulsions can work for you and make you someone who we all rely and depend on the trooper, the guardian, the protector. 
Uh, but these can also have a double-edged sword and impact you in negative ways as well. And you want to be aware of that, that these impulses that work in the good in some aspects of your life could become problematic. Let me just, you saying, how? How could this become problematic? Okay, well, how did your brothers and sisters respond when you tattled on them? Did they like you more? Did they want to include you? Did they want to uh, be your best friend after that? No, nobody likes a tattletale. Nobody wants to be around that person. Um, how, how do you think the people in your life would feel when they realize that uh, this line of questioning that you're asking them is designed to pin them against a wall in order to point out inconsistencies in their story? Well, most people aren't going to respond positively to that. Yeah, you might have caught them. You might have caught them. Ah, ha, I knew it. You might catch them in their deceitful scheme, but there's a good chance that not only are you going to want to be done with them, but they're going to want to be done with you. In this life, there's always going to be some gray areas. I know that's not maybe something that we want to believe or accept, but there's always going to be some gray areas in people's lives that uh, in order to be in a relationship, sometimes we look past these things. Sometimes we may know or we may think we know uh, something is going on or something doesn't seem right or something seems off, but you know, whatever. I mean, to each his own. Um, and there is some general acceptance that people aren't always going to do the right thing. Sometimes people aren't always going to be 100% honest. Sometimes people are going to shade the truth a little bit in order to protect their sense of worth or shade the truth a little bit in order to protect someone else's feelings, or shade the truth or color the truth a little bit in order to not be abrasive or not be abrupt. And sometimes in relationships, like it or not, sometimes in relationships, we use these tactics or these techniques in order to maintain the relationship. And if you are prone to calling that stuff out, um, you can, sometimes maybe you should, but I think it's knowing the difference really. When this is a time when I need to chase this monkey down and I need to pin him against the wall and I need to get an honest answer. And this is a time when I need to just drop it and let it go. Nothing good is gonna come from this. I'm going to damage or destroy the relationship if I keep interrogating this person. Uh, I'm making things awkward. And for the sake of the relationship, maybe I need to just drop it. I need to just let it die. My mom was a six, wing five. And I can't tell you how many times she would just have to say, I need to just let this die. Or when we were having arguments as, you know, young people in the home, let it die. Okay. And sometimes you need to just let it die. Let it go. Okay. Let's see what else she says here about testing people. Uh, notice if people have to earn your trust. Um, which isn't a bad thing. Um, are, are people innocent until proven guilty or guilty until proven innocent? I think I would say it like that. I think with me, I probably err way too far on the other side. People are innocent until proven guilty. And they may even show me, you know, that they're, they don't have my best interests at heart and I'm still prone. I'm still prone to thinking they're my friend. I'm still prone to assuming the best of wanting things to be okay as a seven. I want things to be okay so bad that sometimes I won't pay attention to what is obvious in front of me. Just notice if you're a six, you're probably the other lens. You know, people are gonna make mistakes. People are gonna let you down. People aren't always going to do what they should or stay with you when you want them to stay with you. They're not always going to, be as straightforward, honest, and direct, and a person of control and authority as, as you would like them to be. They're going to let you down. It's going to happen. And if you're not careful, you know, you can end up on a team by yourself. If people have to be perfect, or they have to be, reach this perfect standard, this unreachable perfect standard, in order to be reliable, trustworthy, and included in your life, you might end up on a very small team. Um, okay, 
I'm not saying the way I do it is better. I'm just saying both of us, we probably need to learn from each other. Sevens from sixes and sixes from fives. Okay, notice if you pride yourself on being someone who can smell a dirty rat. You knew it. You knew something was wrong. Notice if you pride yourself on being a person who can see through falsehoods and false personas. I think that's interesting that you have a line to three, which the type three, if they're not careful, you know, their sin is deceit and literally over focuses on the persona and could present false personas. Notice that as a six, you may pride yourself on being able to sniff out false personas or false images that people are trying to project in order to save their face. You can see through that stuff, but under stress, you yourself at times might resort to that kind of behavior yourself. It's just an interesting thought. I wonder if you can see examples of that, of that in your own life. Like under stress, you may present a false persona about yourself in order to protect yourself, in order to project a certain image of being stronger than you really feel on the inside. Interesting. So you pride yourself on being someone who can see through all of the BS. All right. Your caution related to trust may mean that you try to discover the bad intentions and sometimes imagine problems that may or may not exist. All right. Well, interesting stuff. Um, I would just say be careful. Use caution. You know, be careful about how careful you are. <laughs> be careful about how careful you're being. Um, not everybody's going to live up to your expectations. We know this. Um, some people probably need to be thrown out in our life and need to be outside the circle. Um, but then there are other people that probably should remain in the circle, even though um, they may have not been 100% honest with you in the past. Or maybe they haven't uh, always lived up to their own expectations or your expectations for them. We're living in a world with fallen people. We're living in a world with broken people. And the Enneagram reminds us there's nine different ways to be broken. So uh, I hope this helps you going forward in life to have more compassion with yourself, more compassion with others, to maybe see some blind spots and uh, um, move forward in the best life that you can live. And I hope you're always present to life. I'll see you next time.